That's correct, correct, Your Worship. And from your side, are you ready to proceed today? That's right, Your Worship. The court can just place on record that in line with the directives issued um, by this court on the 1st of July 2019, or at least, uh, I see that's only received from the 1st of July, but it was decided um, that the matter will be decided on the papers. Um, obviously after hearing the parties and uh, oral argument. Um, from your side, are you happy with that directive? We're happy, Your, your, your Worship. Thank you. And I can just place on record, I have received the comprehensive reads of argument from the complainant as well as from the respondents. Thanks. Mr. Mkitoma, um, in view of the fact that you represent the complainant, the court will give you the first opportunity to address the court. Um, should you wish to do so, you are welcome to refer to your heads of argument or to read them out. It is, however, not necessary for you to read the whole heads of argument into the record, as I've already had an opportunity to read through that. But you are welcome to highlight anything or to refer to any portion that you prefer to. Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> your Worship, to start off, I'd um, like to make a um, a correction on our heads on paragraph two we say that uh, I, re I am president of blf and i rep i represent the respondent yes thank you worship um now just to say, from our point of view, Your Worship, this matter really is about uh, whether freedom of expression extends to hate speech. And, and, and that's, that's really the crux of the matter. And following that, actually all following from the fact of denial of apartheid as a crime against humanity, Shouldn't this court find the denial of, um, of apartheid as a crime against humanity, both hate speech, uh, discriminatory, and harassment? Harassment is not a matter we canvassed in our papers, but it's something that uh, when you look in the judgment of the Mandela, the, the Nelson Mandela Fonda Foundation, it seems to, to us that there's nothing that stopped this court, in fact, to also um, find the respondents um, they have contravened that provision on, on harassment. So we are putting before this court the, the, the matter that denial of apartheid, to deny that apartheid is a crime against humanity, is in fact uh, hate speech, discriminatory, and, and harassment. But I mean, I do make the point, your, your worship, that we did not converse the, the matter of the of the harassment in our papers. Your Worship, it would be strange if our High Court finds that the display of the apartheid flag uh, is indeed hate speech, discriminatory and harassment. I mean, this wanton uh, display. And this court would find the substance of apartheid because we are saying the respondents are saying apartheid itself is minimized because it's not a crime against humanity. Of course, they say this against evidence which in their own papers they admit that, well, apartheid has been declared a crime against humanity. However, it seems like your respondent number two feels like, well, even if that is the case, well, I have my opinion about it. My opinion is it doesn't. And that's my freedom of expression. It cannot, it cannot be your worship that a, a symbol, a flag, our courts find that a flag, a symbol of the thing, apartheid, is hate speech. But apartheid itself, when it's denied, 
That's not hate speech. So it seems to us, your, your worship, that this court um, would perhaps be guided by the attitudes of, of the high court on the matter. Um, and, 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 the Nelson, and I'll come back to the Nelson Mandela Foundation uh, decision. Then there are two undisputed facts which this whole matter really turned on. One is the second respondent admits that indeed he did say, or they did say, apartheid was not a crime against humanity, but it is not hate speech. So that is not disputed. They did say apartheid is not a crime against humanity. The second fact, which is not disputed, and it has been buttressed and confirmed by the Nelson Mandela Foundation's decision, is that indeed international law and our law has, in fact, now confirmed that apartheid is a crime against humanity. So those are the two undisputed facts. I suppose what then is left, Your Worship, is to ask the question, well, how is denying apartheid the status of being uh, a crime against humanity hate speech? How is it hate speech? Well, the point is, apartheid, and this is where I suppose the, the, this Nelson Mandela case is so important. Apartheid itself is a, it's a, it's a horrible system. And the applicant, the respondent themselves say so. In effect, that black people, myself included, growing under apartheid, very negatively, severely, For someone to say, well, my opinion is that it is not a crime against humanity. That is to deny my pain, and that is to hurt. So all the, the provision of Chapter 10 of the Equality Act, in our view, by, by this declaration, by this statement, this provision that says, well, don't do these things, um, have been done. Well, you know, the, you, you worship the, the, the respondent keep on saying, well, we, our intention is not to harm. You know, that's not what we mean. The, the objective standards of evaluating whether it is hate speech is not what the intention of the, of the respondent is. It's how it affects the victims. And we say that it, it affects us quite severely. And then to say, well, even if the international law and maybe our law says that the truth is the people who voted in the UN were communists. They killed more people. Or we are unhappy that we were called fascists or Nazi and that's why we said apartheid was not a crime against humanity. That, that is untenable. Uh, but and, and I mean, it's also disingenuous to say, well, I don't intend to harm, but still the thing that harms, which has been declared a crime against humanity, isn't a crime against humanity. Uh, it, it is disingenuous, uh, your worship, and it should not be allowed to stand. I'm not going to go, Your Worship, through the Constitution, Section 16. I think we all um, I mean, are aware of what it says. Uh, and also, Section 10 is what we rely on. And again, I have alluded to uh, its provisions. But I do perhaps just to emphasize that part of the prohibited grounds, just to emphasize that, that includes uh, race, gender, ethnic or social origin of a country. When, when you say apartheid is not a crime against humanity, you are, you, you are discriminating against black people because apartheid is specific to black people. Um, that is clear, clearly a, you know, going against one of the grounds that are, are stated there. And we have mentioned the issue of objective assessment
and we've also raised the issue of the, the respondent can't hide behind the, the fact that, well, I did not intend to harm. Well, the, truth, the fact of the matter is you did harm. And, it, and your worship, I mean, we're struggling with understanding why did the respondent feel they need to raise this opinion in this matter? Uh, in this in this way, why? Towards what service? What what is it? If we all agree and we seem to agree, we want to build this a united future. Well, what is the what is the respondent doing? Your worship, now I want to return to, to try to explain this because it will show that it is purposeful. This hurt, this discrimination. If we look at the Nelson Mandela case, the description of the respondent by by court, I think it helps. In 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 page nine, I know we don't have the pages, but in page nine, I'll just simply of, of that judgment, I'll just share with you what the judge says. And the judge here is uh, listing what under the heading of factual metrics and more about parties. Your Worship, understand that this part of the judgment, they, there was no contestation. There's no contestation on the, the, this description of the respondent. I'm saying, Your Worship, to understand why the respondent that is so, shall we say, insensitive. It is part of its mission. Because apartheid was created by the African ruling class. And if Afri apartheid was created by the African ruling class, it seemed to us that therefore this hate speech is part of defending the African uh, 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 legacy. There the judge described Afroforum as in paragraph 17, I'll just read that to your worship. Afroforum is a non-profit company which was registered in the year 2005 according to its website. It is a non-governmental organization whose vision, and I quote, they quote, that Afrikaners who have no other home are able to lead a meaningful and sustainable existence in peace with other communities, Afrikaners. Here, on the southern, on southernmost tip of Africa, close quote, and then the then and the court then again tell us it stated its mission as follows, and and they quote Afri Forum again. Afri Forum works to ensure that the basic prerequisites for the existence of Afrikaners are met by acting as a credible Africana interest organization and civil rights watchdog. It's part of the solidarity movement. I, let, well, let's stop there, Your Worship. The, the point I'm trying to drive is, apartheid was created, the, I, I don't think there's any, any dispute about that. It was codified into law by the Africana elite when it took power. And here is a group that defined itself as pursuing the interests of Africans, and that's its mission. And, uh, and then it turns around and says, well, you and the international, uh, international community, South African law, we know now for a fact following Mandela, this Mandela uh, a decision, that in fact the Equality Court, Equality Act itself, it, is, uh, it has to, when, it, when adjudicating matters, brought under, under that act, see what, or be guided by the, what international law says. In, in fact, Mandela, if we go again to page 56, I'll see the paragraph now. In paragraph 152, the court that says, this court is enjoined to give effect to the objectives of the Quality Act. One of the objects of the Equality Act set out in Section 2H is, the quote, to facilitate further compliance with international law obligations, close quote. Furthermore, in accordance with Section 233 of the Constitution, 
the court must prefer the applicant's reasonable interpretation which is consistent with the international law over the respondent's alternative interpretation that is inconsistent with international law. In other words, Section 10.1 of the Equality Act must be interpreted in a manner that prohibits any manner of expression which constitutes hate speech and not just words or verbal expression. Such an interpretation complies with the constitutional imperatives of ensuring consistency with international law. It also accords with one of the objects of the Equality Act, namely to facilitate compliance with international law. Your Worship, uh, I, have, I have quickly just checked what the, and I mean, this is um, something that I will not raise directly in our papers, but if you look into the other jurisdiction and the question of the denial of the Holocaust, it's a good example. The denial of the Holocaust has been has been uh, criminalized. In other words, you couldn't go to Germany, to Austria, but 19 countries, and say, well, I deny the Holocaust happened. You will be, in some instances I've saw, between 10 years you'll be, you'll go to jail 10 to 20 years even. That is for good reason, Your Worship, that once you have gone through such traumatic history and trying to heal and create a better society, we should not spit on the faces of victims of that system by denying its existence. It hurts, Your Worship. It hurts deeply. It, it, it uh, diminishes our dignity. It injures our dignity. And the dignities of those who perished under the system that is correctly have been uh, declared a crime against humanity. Your Worship, and I'll now just conclude that by simply emphasizing that, again, Mandela, the Mandela decision enjoined us to seriously consider the historical context when dealing with these issues. And there, are not, I'll not even quote, but safe to say, Your Worship, that perhaps I'll just mention for your reference, the relevant paragraph there would be 27. Well, court goes deep into this issue of history. And this history, it is for specific purpose. Victims of apartheid, of colonialism, black people, it's very specific, black people. When we discuss matters like this, we have to ask the question, what is the impact on black people? That is what this history, historical context is so important. And we, we argue as we have say, shown in our papers, that denying that apartheid is a crime against humanity, precisely to deny that history. And it, and, and, and it, it, it only serves one purpose, and that purpose would be to, to hurt, to harm black people, and um, to discriminate against us, um, and to harass us. It is, it cannot be, it is not as easy as, oh, uh, we have seen um, the respondents say, well, Free speech means that uh, I can say things that you might not like. This is more than that. It's not just a question of, oh, you're discomf uncomfortable with my opinions. No. Freedom of expression does not go to harming people, injuring the dignity of people, denying, diminishing the historical circumstances which are punctuated by genocide even, if we're gonna go deep a little bit further. So, so Your Worship, we don't believe, there's not, nothing in the papers uh, to suggest that the, the respondents have uh, provided any useful defense for why you should not, this court should not find against them. They have made the most important admissions that indeed they said these words. Then they said they agreed that uh, apartheid was very bad in their own words. In fact, the description of apartheid is even uh, more you know, intense than what we have provided. And they've also agreed that, well, apartheid is a crime against humanity. But they just provided a blunt um, refusal to um, accept that it, uh, if you were to say apartheid is if you go against this established norms 
uh, you would be committing hate, hate speech. And we believe this is because they are informed and are uh, animated by this concept of the, of the, of the Africana interest, which has given us apartheid. This court has to, to guide and to help us move away from um, this, this history and, and the prayer that we, we, we ask for should be granted, uh, Your Worship. I, I, I jumped all the other matters related to what I think is irrelevant references to matters which are, are before other courts anyway, where we, are, we have been said to have said certain things. But Your Worship, I really do want to emphasize as I conclude that let us allow the Nelson Mandela Foundation, the Nelson Mandela Foundation uh, Trust decision to guide us. Because I think it has done more than even some of the cases that uh, have been decided by our, our higher courts. The facts, it seems to us, in this case, are much closer. The facts that that uh, court looked at and what we are arguing are very close. And, and, and that is why we ask this court to when it, when it makes its decision to look at what uh, the Nelson Mandela uh, court or uh, decision that I had said. I think I will stop there, Your Worship. Thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship, in the, in the wake of, of this interview with which we are concerned uh, today, Mr. McKaiser, tweeted that uh, Mr. Quill uh, said that apartheid was not a crime against humanity. That's what is central in this allegation here today. The headline that followed was to the same effect. But it could equally have been, every forum CEO says apartheid is wrong and infringed on the dignity of people. Because that was also <coughs> what Mr. Creel said. And what Mr. Dalman has done here to 